A couple of weeks ago, I received an email from a company called MakeBlock. MakeBlock is a company that deals with a lot of small robotics, electronics, Arduinos, and even some 3D printing, so it was awesome to get an email from them. Basically, they wanted to let me know that they were just wrapping up a Kickstarter project for a new device they're making, the MBOT, and they offered to send one to me to try out. MBOT is a relatively inexpensive, easy-to-use robot kit designed to help introduce kids to the world of graphical programming and robotics. You can see some of the specs about it on the box there, and there are four versions of the MBOT available. There's Bluetooth and 2.4 GHz wireless versions in both blue and pink. Now as I go ahead and open the box there, the first thing that you see is their motto. The whole reason that this thing started. One robot per kid. Then as you dive in, you get an instruction manual. Unfortunately, mine was all in Chinese, but they do have an English version available that they sent out as a PDF to me later. However, the whole thing is very straightforward, so I was able to complete the entire process in just a little over 10 minutes, even using the Chinese manual. Also in the box, you'll find a couple of motors, which are intended to use to drive the robot, but they can be used for other things. A small infrared remote that takes a CR2025 battery, a couple of wheels, an ultrasonic sensor, a full-size USB cable, a line follower module, the M-Core board itself, which is the brain of the entire thing, a bag full of screws and pieces to put the entire thing together with, a couple of RJ25 cables, a AA battery holder for power, a solid aluminum frame to mount all of it on, a screwdriver, and a small Allen wrench. And after all of that, I finally got to work. I know I probably should have waited for my son to get home to assemble this, but I just could not wait to dive into it, and I wanted to have it ready to go to show him when he got home from the school. To assemble it, you start off by mounting the motors in the frame, which just involves putting two bolts through each of the motors and attaching them with the nuts on the other end. Then you attach the wheels to the motors just by pushing them on. And while you've got it upside down, you can go ahead and put the line follower module on with its RJ25 cable, and then flip the whole thing over and attach the ultrasonic sensor to the front, then you pull all the cables together up through the top of the frame. After that, you put the spacers on, and then attach the AA battery pack to the back if you're going to be using AA batteries. It also comes with some included Velcro, so unless you've chosen to go with a lithium battery pack, which they also sell, you can go with a AA battery pack and it works just fine. After that, you can screw the M-Core board down in place with four Allen screws and connect up all the cabling. There's a really handy wiring diagram in the manual, which made this process completely painless. Even though the whole thing was in Chinese, it's a picture. I could just very easily do it. Now again, since I did not have the English manual when I set this up, I didn't have all the proper download locations to get the software to use with the MBOT. So I started out with what turned out to be a very much older version of software, ScratchBot, and I started experimenting with it. However, after I got in touch with MakeBlock, they gave me a proper URL to get the updated version of their software, which they're calling MBlock. It's the same sort of software, just updated, new stuff in it. And things after that got much, much easier. It can be a little bit tricky to get it all paired up over Bluetooth, and you do have to make sure that you have the right board and the right extension selected in the MBlock software before you try to pair it. But once you've got it all connected up to the software, you can very easily start building your own code in the graphical editor pretty quickly. In the ScratchBot software, they had an example for an ultrasonic car, so I started from that. However, once I moved over to the MBlock software, I ended up swapping out some of the pieces that had been updated from the MBlock software. So in Instead of having to set the speed for both of the motors manually every time I wanted to change state, now I can just pick run forward or turn right and then set what speed I want it to go at. I also added a couple of variables to it to measure the distance of the ultrasonic motor from whatever it can see in front of it. And I added some code into the go forward section to make sure that it didn't get too close to objects when it was going forward. And then, just for fun, I started playing around with the play tone option, so that when you would get too close to an object, it would just play a note that sounded kind of like an error message. And that got me messing around with playing notes even more, so I put together a little shave and a haircut tune whenever it gets too close to objects. And now I've exposed the fact that I'm old. As I mentioned earlier, my son is only six, so he's still learning how to read, so all of the coding and everything is a little bit much for him. But once I showed him that you could actually control it using the arrow keys on the keyboard, he was enthralled. He just wanted to keep playing with it. And then there are even more things you can do with it that I haven't really started exploring thoroughly yet with all the software. There's a light sensor, there's an IR receiver and transmitter, and there's two more RJ25 ports that could be used. I did play around with the IR remote that's included just a little bit, and I found it pretty easy to set up commands in the code to, to do stuff whenever I'd hit buttons on the remote. And then I can wrap it all up as an MBOT program, load it to the device just like you're loading up an Arduino, and it works just fine in offline mode using this IR remote. And again, that's not even half of what you can do with it. As I mentioned, you can use the ultrasonic sensor, it's got a line follower module that's included. In their Kickstarter video, they showed using the M-Core board and all the sensors included in a bunch of different ways, not just in this robot formation. I really liked how they showed someone using the ultrasonic sensor to build interactive games. It's compatible with Lego, other Arduino boards, and even the Raspberry 
Pi, so I'm really looking forward to figuring out some other fun things that I can do with this little guy, and trying to use it to get my son more interested in programming as he learns to read. I've already been playing the Robot Turtles game with him quite a bit, and now that he's learning to read, getting him into Scratch programming seems like an excellent next step for us. And if he can actually see the output of his work with this little robot, that's an amazing impact it's going to have on him growing up. I think that the Imbot is a really neat little kit, and it's a fun way to introduce your kids, or even yourself, to robots, electronics, and programming. I will admit, before all of this, I'll say I knew next to nothing about robotics and motors and everything myself, and I'm definitely a bit of an amateur when it comes to wiring and electronics, and I'd never even touched an Arduino before this. But having a simple plug-and-play interface like you get with this M-Core board made it extremely approachable, and it made me want to do more and more of it. That said, I don't know if I'm going to be in a big hurry to go soldering electronics or anything, but having these RJ25 connectors means that I can very easily continue working with these pieces. The Bluetooth version of the M-Bot is available for $74.99, and the wireless version is available for $79.99, so it's not really all that bad if it's something that you're interested in. All in all, I've been having an amazing amount of fun with this thing so far. Thanks so much to MakeBlock for sending this out. If you guys are interested, I'll have a link to where you can find it down in the video description. As always, remember to hit that like button down below the video if you like this video, subscribe to receive more videos when they become available, and I'll see you again next time.